Let's review and compare two Thunderbolt 5 dock, the Anchor Prime TB5 and CalDigit TS5. I'm Artis Wright. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Anchor. However, all the opinions you're about to hear and my overall thoughts about this are solely going to be my own. What I'm going to do is talk about each of these stock individually first, the capabilities, the port that comes with them, how is it being powered up, and also the cable that you get with this. Then afterwards, we're going to do some performance testing, verify the power output, and wrap up this particular review and comparison. So first, let's start with the Anchor Prime TB5. This is pretty much the dock. Now, this is this cube format. Works out really nicely. These are all the different sides. This is the back and the other side. I just have the name. This is the bottom. There are some fins for heat dissipation. And the cable that comes with these docks are as follows. So you have a Thunderbolt 5 cable, which is a USB-C to USB-C, as you see right there. This is pretty much just a regular vinyl cable, so it's not braided or woven or anything like that. And the other one is this power cord. So this power cord, this goes into the wall, and the other one, this is a C7, same power connector as a Mac Mini or Apple TV. Very common, very easy to find. And what's really cool about this dock is the fact that it has a built-in power supply and it shapes really nicely. Now, what I also have is a Mac Mini here, and I want to give you a comparison the way how this dock would look with the Mac Mini, so you can compare the height of this dock. You can also compare the size of a dock relative to the Mac Mini. I would say they are fairly close to each other in terms of the height. So you get an idea there if you're looking to use this dock like this with the Mac Mini. Now, the other thing too is you can certainly put the Mac Mini on top of the dock that way too, and that's perfectly going to be fine. So let's quickly talk about this dock, the ports and everything else. So on the very top, you see that grill there. This is going to light up to indicate that the dock is on and so forth. So this is the top part. In the front, we do have a power button and we do have a 10 gigabits per second USB type A and also USB type C connector and also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, if we turn the dock this way, you can see that it's just pretty much the name there, which is Anger Prime. And if we turn it this way, we get the TF card or micro SD and SD card reader. Now on the back, there are some grills there to help with the cooling down of the dock. But in addition to this, what you do get are a whole bunch of ports. This is where the power cord would go in to the back of a dock, just right there. So it's super simple, no extra power brick or anything that has to go externally. You have this connector right here. This is a Thunderbolt connection that goes to your computer, whatever that may be, whether that is a laptop that will take the power from here, a Mac mini, a Mac studio, or any other PC computer for that matter will also work with this. There's also two Thunderbolt connectors. These are pretty much your downstream connector. This is meant to connect hard drive displays or any other accessories that uses Thunderbolt technology or compatible USB-C that you want to link up to the system. Now, what's really nice about this system itself is that Anchor have included in these options for either an HDMI or display port. Now with this, you can only use one at a time. You can't power both of them at once. That's why they're in this bracket together, but nonetheless, these common cables are here and it makes it very easy if you take this with you on the road into the studio, for instance, and you want to plug in a display that does not have USB type C, well, you can pretty much use these connectors without having to worry to bring an adapter. That's really awesome. Now the ethernet connection is 2.5 gigabits per second, which is great. And you also have the additional two USB type A port on the back of the system. So for those USB type A, you are getting 10 gigabits per second as well. So really good speed throughout the system, throughout this dock. Now, like I said, this is just a form factor and it has the power supply built in. So this is the Anchor Prime TB5. And now let's take a look at the CalDigit TS5. Here are the two docks next to each other for form factor comparison. You can see that there. And like I said, if you want to take something on the road, or even if you just want to have really nice, easy cable management, I would say the Anchor Prime is definitely the way to go. Now, the way you, how these docks are built, you can start to see them right there. This pretty much used passive cooling on the aluminum on the top and the side of the dock itself. Whereas on the Anchor one, there is an active fan on the inside. However, in my testing, even under heavy load, I haven't heard the fan noise at all. So in the fan area, I would say they're both equal to each other. All right, so let's take a look at this particular dock. It's really meant to be used this way because on the bottom, there is a rubber silicone feet there. However, if you want to use this in a horizontal way like that or like this, they do provide you with two 
rubber silicone strip that you can put into these grooves and use them that way too. On the top, like I said, it's just passive heat cooling aluminum right there. So for this particular dock, what it does come with is a Thunderbolt 5 cable. This is a braided cable. I really like these. They're a little bit more durable. And you can also see that there's a Thunderbolt 5 connection right there. Now, what you do have to use with this dock is an external power supply. This is pretty much the power supply itself on one end. This is the barrel connector that plugs into the dock. On the other end though, you do need another type of connector to go with it. And this is the one that they also did provide as well. So one of them goes into the wall. It is a three prong connector right there. This is a C5 connection. That's the same one that goes inside a Mac Studio or an Apple Studio display. And it just pretty much goes into the power brick like that. But these are the connector that are not quite as common as the C7 that's being used in the Anka one and they're a lot more difficult to find. The other thing too is that if you want to go on the road, you now have to take all these things together, whereas pretty much the Anka one is just the dock and just the cable. So, you know, give and take between one or the other, depending on what you want to do. The other thing that I like a little bit more about the Anker too is just that cable management becomes a little bit easier because now you need to figure out where the heck you're going to put this dock in addition to everything else. So, or this power brick in addition to everything else. So this is pretty much the power brick size comparison. You can see that there in relation to the dock. This gives you an idea for the power brick. It's almost like, you know, a laptop power brick in a sense. So what I want to do is bring in a Mac Mini to show you a size comparison between the Mac Mini and the TS5. You can see there, depending on how you want to use this. And this gives us an idea. All right. So regarding the connector on this dock, on the very top, you have the CalDigit name. There's a light indicator, micro SD card, TF card, and also an SD card reader. There is a USB type C, two of them in the front, but the power output between these two are not the same. So on the anchor one in the very front, they have 245 watts and it just splits between those two. So technically you can plug in both of them. One of them can take like 25 watts, the other one can still get 20. On this one, only one of them will provide 20 watts, which is that top one right there. And the rest will just provide 7.5 watts of power. Now, both of these are 10 gigabits per second connector. There is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, very similar to the Anchor one. And when it comes to the back, let's put this into an orientation that's a little bit easier to see. So we do have a Kingston lock right there, 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection, which is something really great to see in a dock. Now, what I really like to see in the future is just 10 gigabits. Just give us that already, right? Uh, this is where the power would go in through the barrel connector on the power supply. And we do have two USB type A connections. Now the USB type A are not equal. One of them is only USB 2.0 speed. It can still provide 7.5 watts of power. The other one can still also provide 7.5 watts of power, but this is a 10 gigabit per second port. So they do delineate the port a little bit more than the way how the anchor is doing it. Now this one is also a USB type C and it's also a 7.5 watts, 10 gigabits per second. So you can see that these two are both like the type C. This is pretty much a USB 2.0 speed. Now you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that's being repeated on the back and also an analog audio in if you still use those kind of connectors, which most of us are not really using anymore because technically what you can do is just use a Thunderbolt connector and it will also bring the audio signal and everything via that Thunderbolt cable too, using the internal DAC here to just bring the sound out. Now on here, what they have done instead is actually incorporate four total Thunderbolt connection ports. So for this, one of them would have to link up to the computer, which is the one closest to the barrel connector for their power supply right there. The rest, you have three ports. On Anchor, there is two, but on this one, there is one more. And this may seem somewhat interesting because if you're trying to use this dock with a display that only has either HDMI or DisplayPort, you now need to find a USB Type-C to an either HDMI or a DisplayPort adapter or an inline adapter somehow to really convert this through. So this will support displays or a USB-C or a Thunderbolt connection without any problems, but it does limit you in terms of connectivity a little bit. Whereas the Anchor one, I feel, gives you a little bit more options as far as just being able to go out there and plug into different display type and just get things going right away. So those are the comparison between these two dock and some of the ports that you have. Like I said, one of them has a built-in power supply, the other one has an external one, and I genuinely prefer the one with the built-in power supply just because there's not that many of them out there and it makes it that much easier just to handle.
The one more thing that I do want to mention about the CalDigit power <laughs> supply too is that at least on their power supply, it does have the name CalDigit on there. So you do know that this is the power supply or the power brick that's supposed to go with this particular dock. Some of the brands don't actually put in the name on the back of it, which makes it difficult to pair them up and match them up later on. Now let's do some performance test comparison. I reset the studio, plug both of these dock in, now they're ready for testing. On the anchor, when it's plugged in and turned on, you can see that there's a glow blue light at the top. For the computer, I'm using my 16 inch MacBook Pro M4 Max, but for this particular test, I wanna use the M4 generation because the type C port on these computers are Thunderbolt 5. So I wanna be able to test and see if we're using a Thunderbolt 5 cable, can both of these dock deliver close to 140 watts of power to my computer or not? Then afterwards, what I wanna do is a testing where we plug things into the dock, for example, this 27 inch 5K display, BenQ PD 2730S, along with the NVMe SSD and see what kind of read and write speed through the Thunderbolt ports of these docks we're able to get and see if the dock can handle those or not while charging the computer at the same time. So the first thing that I like to do is start out and see what kind of power we're getting on these docks when we have this plug into the system. So for this, I'm gonna use an inline meter, just like that. I'll leave a link of this on Amazon. If you wanna get one of these, you can. And what we're simply gonna do is just use a Thunderbolt 5 cable that came with the dock. We'll plug one end into the computer. And on the other end, I am just gonna simply plug in this meter and the Thunderbolt 5 cable. We'll give this a moment for it to ramp up. A few things to note here is that even though these are rated at 140 watts, they never would peak and sustain at 140 watts. As long as they're in the north of like 130, we're gonna be good to go. So right now it's providing power to the machine and we're pulling about 100, over 130 watts here. This is pretty much as what we would have expected from these docks. So it's actually doing a really good job over the Thunderbolt 5 cable. So now what I wanna do is the same test using the CalDigit TS5. And we're also going to use the CalDigit cable too. Let's give it a moment for it to ramp up. And we're able to pull over 130 watts still in this dock. So it's really doing a good job providing power to our computer while we're using this to test. So the next thing what I like to do is run some speed tests while we have the 5K display link up to the system. But before I do that, what I like to do is plug in this NVMe SSD into the system to see what kind of performance we're gonna get from this as a baseline first before we plug it in via the dock. So with this, I'll plug this in, verify that that's the drive, and this is the speed we're getting for the write. So these are the native speed when we have this NVMe SSD link up to the system. And let's set up the Anchor Prime TB5 first. So for this, we'll use the Thunderbolt 5 cable that came with the dock. So the first one we're gonna do is plug the cable in here. This is the uplink port. So now the dock is connected to my computer, is providing power to the computer. And what we're gonna do is link up my 5K display. And the next thing I'm gonna do is plug in this NVMe SSD. So for this, we're gonna plug it in to that port. That is the one remaining Thunderbolt port on here. Let's run a this speed test. So we can see that for the right, we're getting close to native on the system and also on the read, we're getting really close to like the native, like the system can do. So the speed is pretty much identical to when we have this plug in directly into the system versus plugging in a dock. So this is doing a really good job here. We'll eject the dock and then what we're gonna do is test the CalDigit TS5. So CalDigit TS5, I am going to link up the 5K display to the top Thunderbolt port there. We'll use their included braided cable. Plug this into the Thunderbolt 5 uplink port there. And lastly, we'll plug in NVMe SSD once that comes on, there we go. And again, it's also still providing power to my computer, so that's a good thing. Let's run a speed test. So we can see that the write and the read and everything is really performing identically when we have this plug in to the computer versus when we have it plug into both of these docks. So both of these docks performance wise are very similar to each other. So now let's disconnect this and wrap this particular review and comparison up and share with you some of my thoughts about these two docks. Based on our testing, you can see that both of these docks performance are identical. What it really comes down to choosing between these two docks has to do with the extra added value. A couple of things that I think makes the Anchor TB5 stand out or Thunderbolt 5 stand out 
is the built-in power supply. If you want to have a dock that you can take on location with you, this is pretty much the way to go. You just take this, you take the power cable, you don't have to worry about the power brick and you're pretty much ready to go. And when you arrive at a location, let's say you want to plug it into a display that does not have USB type C, well, you have HDMI and display port ready at your fingertips just right there. And if you want to use USB Type-C or Thunderbolt, there is ports built on these too. Now, the other two things that I really think this dock stand out is the fact that it has more USB Type-A ports. So let's be real about this. As much as we want all of our accessories to be USB Type-C, there are still many of our drive and accessories, peripherals and so forth that are still using USB Type-A and having more of the Type-A port is never a bad thing. So one less dongle to carry, right? When you're using these dock, that's another thing to consider. And lastly, what I think is most important about this dock that tends to get overlooked compared to the CalDigit is the fact that when you take a look at these ports on the front, the USB type A, USB type C, along with the one on the back as well, there's really not a lot of delineation in terms of speed. All these ports, you're gonna be able to get the full speed, 10 gigabits per second, including the one in the front as well, because they do list both of these as 10 gigabit. And the power in the front, you don't have to know between each one what it is, you just know that both of these are sharing 45, so it's just splitting power between the two. So port configuration wise, I think on the Anchor one, it does give you a lot more advantage in terms of being able to plug your devices in regardless of port and have very similar performance compared to the CalDigit where you have to know a little bit more about the port you're plugging into because when you're plugging in one of them, you may not get the performance you are expecting out of that storage device or whatever you have plugged into it. So those are just some of the thoughts that I have between these two docks. Again, it's gonna to come to your workflow, what you're really needing, but I you know, am gravitate much more towards the Anchor Dock now that I have really tested this out. One more thing too that I wanna to add is having these dock, the cable going behind the, ca the table. The Anchor one, the cable is really nice and light there, which is nice. The CalDigit one does have a lot more weight to it because there is a power brick that is below my table right now. So if you don't wanna have a power brick or something that you have to worry behind the table as well, then you know this is definitely something to consider. Anyway, hope you find this helpful. Give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell you're new. I'm Art and I thank you for your time.